Okay guys, so welcome to this back and shoulder sequence. So this is a sequence that I'm doing myself at the moment to help to open my shoulders and my back for my press handstand practice. Um, so starting with a belt, just start to mobilize through the shoulders. Try not to back bend as you do this, so keep your ribs tucked in. And then you'll really start to isolate the movement through the shoulders. Over time you can make that belt a little bit narrower as the shoulders become more open. And then once you've done that a few times, you want to catch the strap behind the back of your head. This is a tricep stretch. Bring the bottom of the strap about in line with your tailbone and extend the bottom arm. You're going to get a double sided stretch here. So if you have a look from the back, yeah, I'm kind of pulling back the top arm rather than bringing it down the back and pulling it away. Again, rib cage in. And then repeat on the other side. So next one, King Arthur stretch. This is a really deep one for the psoas and the quadriceps. Start with your shin directly against a wall and I'd suggest using a bolster here just to cushion the knee, especially if you have a um, sensitive knee joint. And then start off in a lunge. Knee tracks over the second toe, tracks over the ankle and then start lunging away from the wall a little bit if you're tight in the psoas or the quad. The next level up you want to walk that foot in a little bit towards the wall and then get your bum flat against the wall and that foot's going to start to come towards the side of the hip and then press your back against the wall by using the hands above the knee and then for the final variation the killer lift your arms up and then yeah stretch <laughs> so anahatasana melting heart pose some of you might know it as really beautiful opening for thoracic spine so bottom stays over the knees we're going to begin by dropping just the third eye down towards the mat and you want to imagine that you're kind of sinking through the space between the shoulder blades level two the chin and the chest are down and then we really want to try and soften the shoulders here if you're tight bring the hands quite far apart level three for those hardcore people of you you can try to lift the back knees off the ground this is very very intense so please listen to your body slide out with control and then from here we come onto the belly just lift yourself up into a sphinx pose spread the hands and then gently move through the neck, especially if you've been down with the chin and the chest on the earth, so just give the neck a chance to release. And of course you can push up to sphinx pose if you want to go, sorry, seal pose if you want to go further. <laughs> Alright, hollow back stretch. This one looks easy-ish but is a bit challenging. So starting in like kind of a pinch your arm with the hands clasped, your head's off the ground drop your bottom to the wall there's the kicker because that's going to really really open thoracic spine and then press your head through your arms so not towards the wall but the other way pinch my arsena for those who can do that who are strong there's three different arm positions you can use and demonstrating them there so choose the one that suits your shoulder girdle elbow width apart spread the hands walk yourself up to a downward facing dog really press the elbows down and come up towards the wall first to get your balance and then you really really need to press down through the elbows so the shoulders are engaged core in and then maybe start to float your feet off the wall breathe <laughs> Just showing off now, so <laughs> I just learned to do um pincher, so yeah. Supported Setu Bandasana. So you want to slide a block or two underneath the sacrum, so that's the bony flat part of the back. And then you're just gonna start to bring one top of the foot behind you. This is gonna again stretch into the quad and into the psoas. I'm demonstrating there, and then arms up and over the head. And if you want to take this a little bit further, you can upend the top block. So you're going to go higher up. And then just make sure that it's stable so you're not going to fall off the block. And then again, bring that foot into place. And really feel this one out. This is quite deep. Arms and over the head. This kind of simulates Urdhva Dhanurasana, so full wheel posture. A nice big arc in the front side of the body. 
and then if you want to go a bit further hold on to the block to do this to support you can lift the top leg that's going to intensify the stretch in the foot of that leg all of these you want to hold for at least 20 breaths really so we get that kind of yin inspired experience with control come down And then squeeze the bum a little bit as you come out. That's going to just protect the back. And then lowering down towards the earth. Maybe lift the heels so you can articulate the spine as it comes down. So then Urdhva Danyarasana, full wheel posture from there. If you want to go further. Press your hands into the ground. I want you to push through your feet like you're kicking the mat out from underneath you. So a lot of this is leg strength, not necessarily back. So you're trying to bring the chest up towards the chin and you can even come onto your tiptoes here to try and get that arc. The hands may interlace behind the back depending on how flexible the shoulders are. You can stay here if you want to. This is a modified version. Again, articulating as you come down, feeling all of those vertebra come down towards the neck. Rest for a moment and see if it's suitable for you to go to full Urdhva Danyarasana. The body will tell you what it needs. You are coming into full Urdhva. Make sure you can tickle the heels of your middle finger so the heels are in close enough. Plant the hands on the earth. Pop onto the top of your head first and then know that you can move the hands a little bit if you need to. This is key because not all of us are able to have the arms very narrow. If we have long collarbones or there's discrepancies in the shoulder it's difficult and then you want to push your heart center through your arms maybe come onto your tiptoes if you need and to come down tuck the chin to the chest to protect the neck rolling down lift the heels so you can articulate the spine once more and then Sukta Barakanasana when you've finished all your back bending so starting to ease all that out coming to pigeon pose most of you will know this one take a moment to open the hip and then as you come through, initially you want to have your right heel underneath your psoas, so underneath your hip bone. Flex your foot, and before you go anywhere, just make sure that the hips are level so you're not kind of dipping off to one side. And if the butt is lifted, you can place a block underneath the sits bone of the folded leg, just to allow the hips to come neutral. And then before you go anywhere, just lift up so you feel the stretch in the front of your left hip. We are doing psoas opening and back bending in this session, so don't skip this part. And then when you're done, you can walk your hands forward and take the recline version. Now I am moving fast through all these postures. You want to be holding for quite a lot longer and to really allow the, the body to open. The sequence should take you about half an hour to come back up with the hands towards you, flick your hair out of the way, <laughs> then again come back into that back bend. Remove the block, hands either side of your knee, tuck the back toe, unfurl, bended leg up, stretch out, move the body in any way that feels good. And then to finish, everyone's favourite, double pigeon. <laughs> this one oh, is still a killer after eight years of practice. So you're making a box shape. Please make sure that the shin is parallel to the edge of the mat. Flex both feet. It's like a fire log pose we call this in yin yoga. And you can prop yourself up with blocks if you're really tight or you can lay the shin flat on the ground. So notice here it's not a half lotus. We're trying to stack the ankles over the knees. It's gonna feel very, very different. Maybe a bit of pressure onto that top shin if you're staying upright. Eventually over time you can fold forwards and the weight of the body is gonna allow those outer hips to deepen. Uh, people with back pain, please be careful. Maybe skip this variation. Yeah, you see in my face. <laughs> Still really challenging for me. And then this is gonna feel super nice. Just have a little rock from side to side with the knees. And you are done, yogis. Enjoy. Please go at your own pace.